Christmas is over. We, we have a lot of wrapping in our house. If you want to come help us pick it up, it's all over the floor. <laughs> Quick little story about our little grandson who's four in Nevada. He, I mean, little kids to me are fascinating, especially when they're like five and under. They're just so amazed by everything. And little Grant, he's four, he woke up Christmas morning and was unaware that it was Christmas. And he has a routine. And his routine is to come out of his room, and the first thing he does is ask for milk. I want milk, I want milk, I want milk, in a little sippy cup. And it's like, he has to have that milk to function in life. <laughs> and so he comes out, it's Christmas Day, his mom and dad are waiting for him, and he comes down the hall, and the tree's off to his right as he would come out of the hall. And the first thing he says when he walks out, he goes, I want milk. And his mom goes, Grant, look. And he sees the Christmas tree. And the presents weren't there last night, right? But they're there now. And he just goes, <gasps> and she goes, it's Christmas. He goes, it's Christmas? <laughs> and she goes, do you want to open presents or have your milk? He goes, presents. But, but before he opens presents, this is a, a great brother. He yells down the hall to his three-year-old brother, Reed, get out here, it's Christmas. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I wish we all had that kind of enthusiasm. Speaking of enthusiasm, let me ask you to stand one more time. <laughs> so as we step into a new year, one of our goals, I think, is to follow Jesus. Our, our mission statement is, you know, love, connect, mission. And I want to talk about that mission of what it means when Jesus said, follow me, follow me, because we have the opportunity right now to step into a brand new year and recommit our lives to doing just that. Lord, I want to follow you. I want you to lead. I want you to guide. So Lord, as we gather here today, I, I pray you would speak to us, that you would challenge us, you would fill us with your spirit afresh, you would call us again in a very real way to, to be about the business of following you, and Lord, to do it wholeheartedly. Come, Lord Jesus, and speak to us by your Spirit today, through your word, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please be seated. If you have a Bible, open it to Matthew chapter 4, and I'm going to have a verse thrown up here, chapter 4, verse 19. Then he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. You know, living here on the Gulf Coast of Florida, we have lots of fishermen. I mean, let me just start by asking a question. How many people here have ever caught a fish? Be honest. Because fishermen aren't known for being honest. <laughs> See, I, I'm not a big fisherman, but I even have caught a fish, right? And I do believe that God gives gifts to people. And one of the gifts the Bible says he gives is the gift of evangelism. And not everybody is great at evangelism or leading people to Christ. But all believers can be involved in evangelism. My point is, some people are good fishermen, but anyone can do it. Not everyone's a good evangelist, but anyone can do it. And one thing I know about fishing is it's called fishing, not catching, right? I've experienced that many times. And fishing requires patience. Years ago, maybe you saw this movie where Henry Fonda was fishing with his grandson. It's a, it's a movie, it's an older movie called On Golden Pond. And, and Henry's been trying to catch this fish named Walter for years. And he's out on this pond with his grandson. And, well, I got a little clip of the movie. I'll let you take a look at it. Norman! Yes, yeah, so I... 
Try it. It's only a sunfish. Huh? Only a sunfish? Well, it's doing a pretty good trout imitation. Get the net! Good God! It's Walter! Oh! <laughs> keep that line tight, boy! Oh, you beauty. Keep your line tight. Look at that! Oh! 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 So he'd been trying to catch Walter for, for years. And maybe you have a Walter in your life. Maybe you have a, a, a parent or someone you've been praying for. Maybe it's a prodigal son or daughter. Someone that, uh, a friend. You probably, I probably, we all do have a Walter in our lives. And fishing takes it takes patience. You, you pray, you, you share, you, you live an example in front of those people. In the Gospel of Luke, and I, I want to read this passage to you from Luke chapter 5, beginning with verse 1, it was, as the multitude pressed about him, speaking of Jesus, to hear the word of God. He stood there by the lake of Gennesaret, the Sea of Galilee. It's called Gennesaret, Galilee. It has a couple of names. And he saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. And he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. And when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Simon said, Master, we told all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Every fisherman has a story like that, right? We fished all day. We didn't catch anything. My son-in-law was in town before, or actually right before, during the time of Thanksgiving, and with my daughter, and he wanted to go fishing, so I have a little boat, took him out, it's November, I asked some experienced fishermen, where should I go? They said, well, the best place to go is up in the canals where the warmer water, and take some live bait, and you'll, you'll definitely catch a fish. So I bought this bucket of sh- live shrimp, and you know, we went up into the canals, and we fished all day, and we caught nothing. Ever had that experience? Oh, yeah. And the, the, the Scripture shows that they, they had it just as well. Every fisherman has that story. Jesus one time uh, fed 5,000 with fish and loaves, and, and he, he called them to a deeper commitment than just the food. But, well, look what it says in John chapter 6, verse 36. And he said to them, You have seen me and do not believe. Even Jesus, who had kind of cast out the net and and done miracles and great things before all these people, they they still didn't believe. Fishing takes it takes it takes patience and, and sometimes it can also be very discouraging when you don't catch, when people won't listen, where they're kind of shut you down and uh you can get discouraged. There's discouragement involved in fishing. And you go to bed that night, you didn't catch anything, but you get up the next day and you just go again. You start, again, you start over. Jesus calls us to be fishers of men. I want you to hear, I want you to listen. He says, I'll make you fishers of men, not hunters. It's fishing. Fish are drawn. We're not out there, you know, hunting people. We're not going to overpower them and, you know, blast them with the Bible or thump them with the Scripture. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, uh, Peter describes it kind of like this, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And, and here's the fishing part. Always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and with fear. To, to, to be humble and, and reverend and, and, you know, 
approach him in a way that is, is gentle and with respect. Now, I, I want to review just a moment some of the things that have to do with being a fisher of men. Everyone could fish. We've established that. Patience is required. Discouragement is involved. And it's fishing, not hunting. You know, gr- growing up here on, on the Gulf Coast, I grew up here my whole life, Pensacola, Gulf Breeze, the beach. And my, I remember my stepdad used to have a boat in the in a marina over in the bayou. My, my brother actually owned the marina on the beach for a while, for some time. And there are two kinds of boats you usually see in a harbor or a marina. One can be like a, a pleasure boat, you know, like a, like a yacht. If we got a picture of one of those, we could bring up. Maybe we don't. There it is. That's Neil's boat. <laughs> so, so those kind of boats you can see sometimes in a harbor. And then, then there's a fishing boat, you know, which is totally different. Like, like there's a fishing boat you know, out in the stormy weather, fighting, fishing, working. So, so there's two kind of, uh, of boats usually in a harbor. There's a pleasure boat all about comfort. You can sleep on them. They have cabins and kitchens, master bedrooms, even showers. I mean, some have, you know, people who work on them for them. And then there's the the fishing boats, and they're very different. You know, they go out in the gulf, and they, they, they bounce through the waves. It's not about comfort so much as it is about catching fish, and works involved, and sacrifices involved. It's easier and more comfortable, listen, to have a church or a ministry that's all about comfort. Hey, let's just come and, you know, let's not, let's not worry about anything else but ourselves. It's all about us. But Jesus doesn't say, follow me, and I'll make it as comfortable and easy for you as possible. What he says is, follow me. And I'm going to make you not someone who hangs out in a yacht, but I'm going to make you a fisher of men. The church is not a pleasure boat. The church is a fishing boat, right? I mean, that's what we've been called to do. And fishing can be hard. It can, it can be dangerous. You ever see that uh, show, The Deadliest Catch? These guys are out in the Bering Sea trying to catch crabs, I think. It's one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. It's like... It's like reading the book of Acts. You ever read the book of Acts? These guys who Jesus sent out to fish for men, they go to prison, they get beat up, there's riots, all this stuff is going on. As they're going about fulfilling, catching those who need to know the Lord in some of the most difficult waters in the world. And sometimes the best fishing is in the most difficult waters. That neighbor you know next door, you think those waters, well, those waters over there are pretty difficult, right? That, that relative. A lot of difficult waters. But there's great joy. Listen, there's great joy in catching a fish. You never see a, a fisherman who posts a picture all bummed out. Well, in fact, I, I got a picture of a fisherman up here I want to show you. Look at that guy. He's got a giant smile on his face. Right? You don't want to see some guy, look at this, I caught this fish. No, it's always exciting. And, and even more so for someone who leads someone or brings someone to the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, how much more exciting is that than catching a stinking fish? There, there's an amazing analogy here, and I think that's why Jesus used it between fishing and ministry. Of course, all, all analogies break down. I mean, if you and I catch a fish, they usually after we catch a fish, one or two things happen. We either catch and release. That's too big. It's too small. I don't want to clean it, whatever it might be. Or you kill it and you eat it. Now, when you're fishing for souls, or it's quite different. You fish to save the person. And you fish to feed the person. 
quite different than fishing for fish. Jesus says to you and I, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. The words of Jesus defined and are part of who we are as followers of him. I want you to follow me, but here's why you're going to follow me, because I'm going to make you fishers of men. Not necessarily to improve the beach or the lake, not necessarily to have a fancier boat or to make fish more comfortable or to get the fish all together in a little bowl and make sure they're well fed and there's never any problems, there's never any danger, there's never anything uncomfortable. And if we're not careful, the church can lose sight or even water down why we're here. We're called to be fishers of men. We, we've got a mission. And the message is, is, is because people are lost. You and I were, were lost at one time. We need a Savior. We find forgiveness. Jesus died on a cross to pay the price for your sins and mine. And he says, hey, I need you to help in this amazing privilege of being fishers of men. Because God offers all of us grace, right? And man, you and I are sinners. We all know that. And he's offering us by grace this gift of eternal life. And even though we're sinners, God loves us. But at the same time, God is just and he's righteous and he will in no way allow the wicked to go unpunished. So he solves this problem of I love them, but they, 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 I got to punish sin through the person of his son, Jesus Christ. You know the story. He dies on the cross, takes our place, and pays the price for our sin. And he offers us this gift of eternal life. And, and he says, you can have it, what I've purchased for you, by faith. If you'll just believe, if you'll just trust, if you'll just receive. And people today, well... It seems like they want to water down the Bible to, to remove the authority of the Scripture. Let, let's just have a, a comfortable yacht, so to speak, and hang out together. Remove the authority of the Bible. Don't offend anybody. That's the big thing in our culture today. And I want you to hear this. In following the Lord, there is an offense in the gospel to people. It's just there. You go up to someone and, and begin talking to them and say, well, you know, you're a sinner. I'm, I'm not a sinner. Well, then you're a liar. No, it's you. <laughs> we're all sinners. There are absolutes in the Bible. There's truth. And you can't water it down. You can't change it. There's clearly defined lifestyles in the Scripture that God is opposed to. That he's against. Not in a harsh way, but that I can save you out of that and I can teach you how to walk in truth. There's rights and wrongs. The scripture calls us to turn from our sin, to repent, so to speak, to, to do a whole, a whole 180. I'm, I'm going this way, now God's called me this way. And you can't, can't water that, you can't make, well, let's just make a safe little pool for everybody to hang out in where no one's ever offended. I mean, if you tell some people that Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him, they're offended by that. But that's what the Scripture teaches. That's what we're called to fish with. The watered down or dumbed down message of today is kind of like this. God loves you, and we need to love each other. Now, that's true, but there's a lot more to the Scripture and a lot more to the Gospel than just that, isn't there? I mean, tons more. Jesus said you must be born again. That's more than just God loves you. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I got to change. Yeah, you you got you to be born again. You, you know, anyone who comes to, to the Lord, he, he, you know, he leaves the old life behind and becomes a new creation in Christ. Our mission is not to make everyone feel loved and accepted or stomp out world hunger, or, or bring world peace, or save the whales, or stop global warming. 
Our mission is to lead people to a life-transforming repentance and faith through Jesus Christ. Where once they say, you know, once I was blind, now I see. I mean, once I was blind, I didn't know anything about the Bible or what it meant to follow the Lord, to be forgiven of my sins. And boy, when it happened, that passage, once I was blind to the whole thing, didn't understand what the Bible was about, who Jesus was. But now I see. God has a way of changing the world and hearts and destiny of people through a genuine salvation experience and a living encounter with the risen Savior of Jesus Christ. And most of the people that live around us and traffic in our culture, just to put it very simply, need to get saved. So Jesus says to you, to me, as we step into 2022, follow me. Okay, I'll follow you. Well, don't, where's my yacht? No, I, you don't, I, I've got a fishing boat for you. Well, I don't like to fish. Well, I'll make you a fisher of men. I'll teach you how to do it. It's not like you're already there. See, our text, let me just turn back there again to Matthew chapter 4. Listen to these verses. Then he said to them, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Matthew 4 verse 19. They immediately left their nets and they followed him. Going on from there, he saw two others James, the son of Zebedee, John, his brother, and boat, and he called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father, and they followed him. See, our job is as fishers of men, because in that day, we, we know they didn't use fishing rods, they threw a net. They had to clean the nets, they had to repair their nets. And our job is to spread the net, so to speak, to catch fish, to catch others, to make it clear, to share what he's done for you and I. And of course, you know, fishing nets, well, they have to be made in a certain way. That They have this kind of mesh, this intertweaving and locking of, of you know, lines, and it, it can't be too loose can't be too tight. You don't want, you know, to catch every tiny little fish, but at the same time, you don't want big fish to slip through holes. So the net has to be made just right. And our message has to be just right. It can't, it's got to be scriptural. It can't be too general, like, God loves you. Hey, I told somebody today, God loves them. Well, that's nice. Blessings on you. And I shared the gospel today. I don't know if you did. <laughs> Trust in the Lord. Have faith. Be spiritual. And, and never tell them how or why or what the Lord has done for you or on a cross for them. The, the net has to be, be woven right. The right message has to be given. How, how they hear unless somebody tells them. And, and, and the net has weights on it. Otherwise, it just float on the surface. It has to have enough weight to it to sink to the bottom. And there's weighty truths, if you will, in the Scripture that need to be shared. There's promises of God that need to be revealed. There's, there's the weighty need, if you will, the heavy need of a Savior for people in our culture, in our lives, in our neighborhoods. And there's the weight of the power of the Holy Spirit that needs to be in my life and in your life keeping my nets, so to speak, clean, usable, keeping my life clean in a way that I don't disqualify myself, where God can't use a, a, a vessel that's not clean. Keeping the net repaired, not compromised, not drifting from Him, not living a carnal life, not living with one foot in the world and one foot in the church or in Christ. There, there's something about this analogy that's there about the cleaning and taking care of the nets that catch fish. How, you say, well, how do we do that? Well, you, you follow Jesus and you trust Him that He will make you a fisher of men. He didn't say, follow me and you will be a fisher of men. He said, follow me and I will make you a fisher of men. 
He'll equip you. He'll, he'll shape you. He'll fashion you. And, and he will make you into one he can use to catch others. doesn't happen automatically. Think, think about the guys Jesus called. These fishermen from Galilee. They, they, they were not at that first calling like big world changers. They were fishermen along the Sea of Galilee. They're not what you would call Bible writer guys. Most of them very uneducated. I mean, Andrew, you try to look through the Scriptures, he was one that got called. You you hardly ever hear him even say a word in the whole New Testament. James and John, when they were first called, they were hotheads, tempers, explosive. Jesus said, I'm going to nickname you guys Sons of Thunder. Peter was impulsive. He, he was kind of a control freak. I got this. You got that. They'll go away, but not me. Always in charge. The apostle Paul, before he came to the Lord, he was like a religious fanatic. All proud of himself. It's not follow me because of who you are. I mean, I really need you. It's follow me, and I will make you. Let me lead you and guide you. Not follow me because one day you might make something of yourself. No, follow me because I'll make something of you, if you let me. The disciples fished all night and caught nothing. And Jesus said, okay, go back out, throw your nets on the other side. I mean, this is, this is their response. Well, okay, at, at your word, we'll do what you say. Now, this is Jesus, right? Heals the blind, opens those eyes, he, he touches a leper. I mean, couldn't Jesus have just said, okay, fish, jump in the boat? But he sends them out. Now, I want you to go back out. I want you to drop down the nets. He, he, he drew the fish to the net, but they had to throw the net in the water. And I want to submit to you that Jesus is the one who draws the fish. We're the ones who cast the net. And basically, you're the net. You say, well, you mean he wants me to go out there? Yeah, that's what he wants you to do. This is, this is what it means to be on mission. This is what it means to follow Jesus that I'm, a, I'm one of his and I'm supposed to represent him and, and he's called me to follow him. He said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And they left their nets. I mean, that, that, that was their whole world, fishing. That was their dad's world. And Jesus says, well, if you'll follow me. Christ brought them in to a whole new life. That's what he does. You know what he does? He makes you aware of people. That's his goal. I want to make you aware of lost people. If you follow me, I'll make you a fisher of them. They they left those nets, and and, and they became those who touched the world of people. Now, I'm sure they struggled. They did. They struggled at, at the beginning. Remember one time they had a bunch of people on the hillside and the disciples are all freaked out because well, we don't have enough food for these. Lord, just send them away. You ever felt that way? Just send them away, Lord. I don't need people. I don't say hi to them. I don't, I don't look at them. I, I don't even want to see those people. Send them away. The Lord said, no, 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 let's don't send them away. Our Lord, we can't go through there and Jesus said, no, we, we must. We must go through Samaria. No, Lord, you don't get it. We don't have anything to do with those Samaritans. Lord, we don't have anything to do with those, Republic, those Democrats. We don't have anything to do with those vaccinated or unvaccinated people. Just send them away. We don't have anything to do with CNN or Newsmax. Just shut it down. The Lord said, no, we're going through there. They, they didn't want anything to do with those Samaritans. But as they followed Jesus, listen, they became interested in all people, all of them. Peter became a church leader. Peter became a pastor. 
He probably would have never dreamed in all of his life as a fisherman on the Sea of Galilee that one day he'd be living in Jerusalem pastoring a church. Man, God made him a fisher of men. How did he get that heart? Following Jesus. Loving God with all his heart, mind, and strength, and loving his neighbor as himself. I think the, at the beginning of this following Jesus, the, the disciples, if you read the, the, the Gospels, they were intrigued with Jesus. Who is this guy? They watched him. They listened to him. And they were filled with awe many times. Like, wow, no one's ever taught like this. Lord, Lord, tell us what this means. What did that parable, break it down for us. And then one day they're in the boat and he stops the wind and the waves and it says that they were like, who is this? Who is this? That even the winds and the waves obey him? And after several years, Jesus kind of pulls them aside there in Caesarea Philippi on that hillside, the, the beginning of the Jordan River, the base of it. He goes, uh, who do men say that I am? Oh, yeah, some say you're this, some say you're that. Okay, but you guys have been with me for a while. Who, who do you think I am? Of course, Peter, you're, you're the Christ. They, they, begin to, they begin to realize who he really is. It didn't happen overnight. You're the Christ, the son of the living God. And they still didn't understand the cross part at that time. They still hadn't grasped that. And they continued to follow. And just as Jesus told them he was going to go to the cross, he was going to die, he did. And just as he told them he would be raised from the dead, he was. And on the day of Pentecost, Peter spoke with great, listen, spoke with great passion, great power, and there's no question about Peter's message, all about Jesus, who he was and what he did and how he died and how he rose from the dead. And Peter, standing there in Jerusalem, just throws out this giant net and tells all those who are listening who Jesus really is. And 3,000 get pulled to the shore that day and come into the kingdom. They were fishers of men. They were there. They saw lives changed as they, as they went out into difficult places. They saw demons cast out. They saw tormented people made whole. They saw the sick recover. And God was still changing them while they were changing others through the power of the gospel. All because one day they're there at the Sea of Galilee and Jesus pointed his finger at them just as he does you and I. And we have a choice to make. He says, follow me. Well, what's in it for me, Lord? A yacht? Comfortable little bowl that I can sit in and get fed all the time and swim around? No, no, no. I will make you into fishers of men. If you and I want to be on a mission, or to put it like this, to be fishers of men, we got to know him. we got to trust him. And to have a heart for people like he has a heart for people. To be able to go into difficult waters. See, Jesus has a heart for people. Think about this. He loves you. <laughs> How could he love you? The same way he loves other people that are just like you and me. Charles Spurgeon, who was a great evangelist and a great pastor and a great teacher, was teaching a class one day, and a student came up to him and said, Mr. Spurgeon, people aren't responding to the Lord and my ministry like I had hoped they would. And Spurgeon responded. He said, well, do you expect them to come to the Lord every time you preach? He goes, oh, oh, oh no. And Spurgeon said, that's your problem. That's your problem. He said, cast out the net and expect to catch fish. Jesus made this promise, and, and, and I believe it's good for 2022. He says, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Listen, 
2022 stands before us. You know some fish out there that need to be caught. Start by just saying hi. Start by being friendly. Start by letting the Lord fill your heart with love and compassion for them. Start by, at the minimum, saying, hey, I go to this church. Would you like to go? I'll go with you. Let's be on mission in 2022. Let us, as a church, as a family, as individuals, become fishers of men. Let the Lord make us into that. I, I, I've never met anyone who just came from an experience of sharing the gospel or, or leading someone to Christ that, that was ever bummed out. Yeah, I just shared the gospel. What a bummer. No, there, there's this food that you knew not of suddenly that you're like all jazzed up about. Yeah, I got talking to this person, this neighbor, this friend, this relative, and, and suddenly the Lord brought it around. He opened the door, and you know what? I, I stepped in. And it's all like the Lord even gave me words to speak, like he said he would. He, he said to these guys who were just ordinary, everyday people who lived a normal life, who had jobs, and they were throwing their nets, they were casting for fish, they, they never dreamed in, in, in a million years that one day they would be the people they were, or God would do what he said he would do. And it started with just this. Hey, you guys want to follow me? Well, what's, what's in it for us? Well, I'm going to make you fishers of men. You mean leave these fish for those fish? Yeah. And they said, okay. Did they do it perfectly? Obviously not. Do you and I? No. But that's what we're called to do. See, my, my challenge for myself and for you as we head into 2022 is follow Jesus. And the reason we follow Jesus is because he will make us fishers of men. And that's our mission. To see people come to know and love and be forgiven by the Lord Jesus Christ, just like you and I have. We got a call in our lives. You and I have been called to be fishers of men.